All right, everybody, we are here today to learn a new type of cipher. So what I'm here to do is teach you something known as a Playfair cipher. Now, it's kind of funny that we're talking about a Playfair cipher while I'm teaching this to you as part of a game, a spy game, a, tra a training simulation known as Operation Real-Time Conspiracy, where I do want the competitors to play fair. However, in order for me to be able to assess the performance and the knowledge of those competitors in, in communicating via cipher, I need to teach them this cipher. So if you've learned ciphers with me before, if you've learned encryption with me before, then you know that I like to keep things as simple as possible. And I have a very basic Caesar shift cipher uh, video that's already out there that a number of folks have watched and enjoyed. And I've learned from that video how to even further simplify my cipher instructions. So that's what we're going to do today as we learn about the play fair cipher. That's an R, not a K. You can see this is going to be a challenge for me. So the Playfair Cipher is the mission for today. So now let's jump into this cipher and let's talk about how it works. Now the first thing to know about this cipher is that it is built on a 5x5 five five grid. So every time you go to create this cipher, whether you're looking to encode or whether you're looking to decode, whether you're receiving a message or sending a message, you have to create a five by five grid. And if I do this right, then the blocks will look fairly even and we'll have a good place to start. Hey, that's not too terrible. So it starts with a five by five grid. Now, when you look at a five by five grid, then obviously then you're looking at 25 different letters, but the, um, but the US alphabet has 26 letters. So because of that, we have an important rule. And that first rule is that any time you use a Playfair cipher, you basically have to identify one block that will use two letters inside the same block. Now, typically, this is a, we use the letters I and J interchangeably in one of the same blocks. So this will make sense as we get a little bit further on, but I wanted to make sure you understood. 25 blocks, but 26 letters means that one block has to actually be a combination of two letters. Now, when you go to create this Playfair cipher, you need to first identify what your key is going to be. Now, a key in a Playfair cipher can be any number of things. It can be a full word, or it can be a letter, it can be a series of letters. We're going to go ahead and we're going to use two letters, and I'll show you why in a second. So we're going to make our key two different letters in the cipher itself. And the reason that we use two letters is because when you encrypt using the Caesar, the uh, Playfair cipher, you're actually encrypting with something known as a digraph. And a digraph is when you put two letters together. For example, a B is a digraph. L F is a digraph. That's different than a uh, a letter based encryption or a numeric encryption because it involves two different letters. So everything we encrypt with the Playfair cipher is going to be in digraph form. So because we're going to be encrypting in digraph form, it makes sense for us to include our key also in two letters as a digraph. That's why we're gonna use a digraph key when we make our Playfair cipher. All right, so how do we start this? Once you have your five by five grid, you want to identify your key digraph. We're going to say our key digraph is A L. That's just an arbitrary set of letters that we're that we're picking as the starting place for our key as we encrypt or as we create the foundation for our play fair cipher. So what that means is our key will go up front. So A and L will go in the first two blocks using the standard approach to how you read in English. If you read from left to right, top to bottom, that's exactly how we're going to encrypt. Now, for the rest of the letters, we're going to follow in alphabetical order across this grid, remembering that I and J are in the same block. And then when we get to the letter L in the alphabet, we want to remember that the L has already been used as part of the key. But, so we want uh, essentially one letter in every block with the exception of I and J, 
where L is here instead of in its true place. So that means A, this is our L, this will become B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, and J in the same block, K, here is our L, L, this becomes M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T, U, V, W, X, Y, and of course, Z. Now, here is the foundation for our digraph using the AL digraph as the key. Now, how do we go about encrypting using this Playfair cipher? Uh, it's, it might be complicated at first, but just stick with me and you'll pick it up very quickly. So in the digraph cipher, you remember that you encrypt everything with two letters, with a digraph. So the way that works is you take whatever word you plan to encrypt. In this case, we're going to make the word test. You take that and you split that into digraphs. So TE is the first digraph. ST is the second digraph. Now, if our true plain text is test, we don't want to use the true plain text letters. We want to go ahead and encrypt those letters, and that's where we use the cipher. Now, there are three rules when you go to encrypt something using the cipher. The first rule is that looking at the two letters in the digraph, if those same two letters exist in the same row, then you actually encrypt using the letter after the target letter. If they exist in the same column, you again use the letter that follows the target letter. I'll show you examples of both of these in just a second. In the event that they sit opposite each other on the grid, not in the same row and not in the same column, then you use a block form or a block shape, a square shape, to find the correct encryption. So let's go ahead and we will use test, T-E-S-T, two digraphs, T-E-S-T, -T, as our example to start. So first, we want to encrypt the letter T. The whole digraph, T-E, is found here. Here is the letter T. Here is the letter E. You can see that T and E are not in the same column, and they are not in the same row. That means that in order to encrypt them, what we need to do is create a block, a block where this and this we find the mirror letters in the block. So now you can see that there's a block here from E to H, T, Q, and back to E. That is our square. We use that square to encrypt the T and the E. We take the same letter on the opposite row from the T inside the square. So the, the letter that squares up with the letter E is Q. So that becomes Q. Our E squares up with the letter H in the same row. So in the same row, we use the letter H. That's how we encrypt the T and the E according to the square. The next digraph is S and T. Here is our S, here is our T. S and T exist in the same row. When they exist in the same row, what you actually do is use the letter adjacent as your encryption. So the letter adjacent to S is the letter T. The letter adjacent to T is the letter U. So our complete encryption for test is right here. Q representing T, H representing E, S representing uh, T representing S, U representing T, T-E-S-T. The only way that someone would be able to decrypt this or decipher this is if they knew that we were working from an AL key digraph and they had recreated the entire digraph and followed the same rules about square encryption and row encryption. Let's go ahead and use another example where we get two letters that are in the same column, in the same column now. So we're going to go ahead and we are going to encrypt the word got. G-O-T. Actually, you know, to make this even simpler, 
let's go ahead and encrypt this because I don't want to give you a an odd number yet. Let's encrypt the word both instead. B O T H. B O T H, if you split that in half, that gives you two digraphs. B O T H. You go to the letter B and the letter O. They are not in the same row. They are not in the same column. But you can see again, they do make a square. A square right here. So to encrypt them, you take the letter in the opposite corner of the square from the B, that is the letter C. You take the letter in the opposite corner of the letter O, that is our N. Now then you've got T and H. T and H are two letters in the same column. When you have letters in the same column, you do a similar uh, shift that you did to when they were in the same row, only you shift down. So the H is represented by an O, and the Y, the T, is represented by a Y. So B O T becomes Y, and H becomes O. So when we want to encrypt the word both, we use these encrypted digraphs C N Y O. So you've now seen how we encrypt whenever you have letters that make that are in not in the same column, not in the same row. You've seen how we encrypt with letters that are in the same row and letters that are in the same column. Now there are a few scenarios here that we have to understand or we have to prepare for because uh, you can see with digraphs that really only works out clean anytime you are using words that have an even number of letters. But sometimes words and sentences end up having an odd number of letters. So for example, if we wanted to encrypt the word man, M-A-N, man only has three letters. So we have to create a placeholder after man, uh, a fourth letter, in order to create a digraph. So how do we do that? The, the customary way to do that is to simply choose the last letter that's in the, the uh, alphabet spot uh, of the 5x5 five five grid. So in this case, that letter is Z. So we would encrypt this as M-A-N-Z. And anyone who uh, is familiar with your style of, of encryption is going to know to look in that bottom corner for the missing letter. So M-A-N-Z will become a digraph of M-A-N-Z. M-A-N-Z. When you go to encrypt that, you'll find the M in the A. Here's M, here's A. You'll encrypt with the letters in the opposite corner. M becomes K, A becomes L. You'll go to the N and the Z. The N and the Z are also in a square pattern from each other. The opposite of the N is the letter P. The opposite of the letter Z is the letter X. And here is your Playfair digraph encryption that comes out to spell the word man. Now, obviously, when someone decrypts it, they're going to get this spelling. M-A-N-Z. They will know, because of the rules of encryption, that this Z is in fact a placeholder. And that is how you create a digraph anytime you have an odd number of letters. So we've covered the I and the J being a placeholder in the same place. We've covered how to encrypt in the row, in the column, and when they're not in the same row and they're not in the same column. And we've also covered what to do with odd numbers of letters. Now there's one more interesting scenario that happens in the English language, and that's whenever you have two of the same letters. Two of the same letters. For example, the word free. In the word free, if you split that into a digraph, you have F-R-E-E. -E. You have this double letter. Well, it's not very secure to communicate double letters uh, with a single uh, digraph or with a single encrypted uh, substitution. So what we do instead is we break this, this doubling of one letter into two separate digraphs. Here's what I mean. Again, using 
the value in the lower corner, we separate this free uh, translation, we, our target plain text, we break that into fr, e, z as a placeholder, e, z as a placeholder. So what we've done is turn these four letters into a six-letter diagraph, fr, e, z, e, z. And then when we go to encrypt it, we do the same thing that we've done before. We find the F and the R. F and R are in the same column. F is replaced with M. R is replaced with W. So F becomes M. R becomes W. E and Z. Here's our E. Here's our Z. The E and the Z are not in the same row or the same column. Therefore, we take the opposite row the opposite column, and we use that as their substitution. So E becomes I. We'll use the I instead of the J because I is more commonly used than J. E becomes I. Z becomes V. So IV, IV. So our encryption for free becomes MW, IV, IV. And this is how we use the Playfair cipher whenever we have a word that has a doubled set of letters. Now for one final example before we end this video, because I know I have given you a lot of information, and this, while it is a basic cipher, is not always an easy cipher to pick up the first time. So what I want to do is I want to give you one more example where we encrypt, we encipher a uh, two-word phrase that actually uses all of the all of the examples that we've talked about. The double, the uh, column, the row, the block, the uh, odd number of letters, and the double letters. So we are going to go ahead and we are going to encrypt the two-word phrase, no sleep. And if you are competing in Operation Real-Time Conspiracy right now, I don't want you to read too much into this. I'm not telling you that you're not going to get to sleep. But what I am telling you is that you will need to learn how to master this cipher. So no sleep breaks into a series of digraphs. N-O, S-L. We need to split up the E-E -E and we need to create a placeholder because we end with an odd number of letters. So for the E-E -E, we will create E-Z ez and then for the final letter p that's all by itself it will become pz so no sleep becomes the digraph n o s l ez ez pz that is actually the plain text the plain text that uh, we are trying to encrypt so to encrypt that we turn to our playfair grid First, we look at N and O. N and O are in the same row, which means we substitute with whatever follows the letter in that row. N becomes O. O becomes P. The next digraph is SL. Our S and our L are on two opposite corners of a block, not in the same column, not in the same row. S becomes R. L becomes B. Our next two letters are E and Z. Here is our E, here is our Z. They make a block, not in the same column, not in the same row. So EZ becomes I, I replaces E, V replaces Z. We double that because it happens twice. IV, IV, and then our last example is P and Z. P and Z are in the same column when they're in the same column, you replace it with whatever follows. So the P becomes the letter U, and the letter Z flows down under the bottom and back to the top. So it becomes the letter D. Whenever you have something on the bottom or something on the edge that flows over and you have to move right or you have to move down, you roll it back around to the top or back around to the left-hand side. So our Z in a column flips around to the top and becomes the letter D, 
making our final encryption O-P-R-B-I-B-I-B-U-D. And that is how you would use the Playfair cipher to encrypt the phrase no sleep. I mean, the way I write sometimes is uh, encrypted enough. All right, folks, so there you have it. A little bit of a, uh, a heavier lift, a more complicated cipher than the first cipher I taught you with the Caesar Shift cipher. However, what we have here is another basic uh, field-tested encrypted cipher that we can use anytime and that we will use in Operation Real-Time Conspiracy. This is called the Play Fair Cipher. If you want to read more about it online, keep in mind if you read about this online that there are small changes that different uh, online uh, articles and different academic materials will teach you to, I gave you the simplest form here using a simple digraph as the key and then with a handful of examples that allowed us to use this in simple, rapid, uh, learning the entire cipher in less than 25 minutes. So if you want to watch the video again, be, feel free to use it. And for those of you operating in an Operation Real-Time Conspiracy, you're going to get very familiar with this cipher because we're going to be using it a lot for practice. All right, that's all I've got for you. Godspeed, Everyday Spy.